Michael Gray, CPA, and this is Financial Insider Weekly. Welcome to our show today. My guest today is Don Pollard, who is a Chartered Life Underwriter, or CLU, and also a Chartered Financial Consultant, which they use CHFC, the initials behind their names. And he's an insurance broker at Advanced Professionals, which is a regional insurance brokerage company headquartered in Northern California, serving about 350 clients. The company offers employee benefits and executive life and disability insurance planning. Don has worked in the insurance industry since 1973, and at Advanced Professionals, he's worked there for 13 years. And uh, he's managed insurance agencies and trained agents. Don is currently the president of the Silicon Valley chapter of the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Because health care insurance is such a critical area, uh, I devoted some interviews with Don before to discuss health care reform. And so we have those posted on our uh, internet site, financialinsiderweekly.com, under past episodes. But today, Don and I are going to focus on uh, health insurance for individuals. And so, Don, thank you for being my guest today. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Okay. So as we get started, I want to caution our viewers that some rules for medical insurance may vary from state to state. So you need to work with a consultant who's familiar with those state laws. Um, okay, so I guess with that, we'll just get started with our first question. So Don, when it comes to individuals and health insurance, a lot of people say, don't leave home without it. What do you have to say? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Mike, I, I would agree generally with the statement that uh, Certainly having adequate medical insurance uh, is going to uh, add to a person's peace of mind and certainly their financial well-being should something unforeseen happen. And we, we hear statistics every day uh, and they, they change every day uh, regarding a huge number of bankruptcies uh, of, of citizens in our country because of medical insurance uh, bills and expenses that have uh, that have gotten out of hand that they didn't have anything to handle. So it's uh, not the insurance itself, it's the medical expenses that they have that maybe they're not insured and anyway. Yeah, exactly. So they have to yeah, exactly. come up with a bundle of money in order to pay yeah, those bills. Exactly. And I think there's a there's an interesting caveat there and that and that is that um, insurance companies uh, uh, give you a discount for for having insurance when you get your medical care. So uh, for example, if you're in a network uh, situation, a PPO yes. or an HMO, and you go for uh, for a procedure, that procedure is going to cost you less if you have if you're signed up with an insurance policy than it would cost you if you were just somebody off the street. Which which then again, I think compounds and adds to uh, the problem that uh, that people face that don't have uh, medical insurance uh, to help them cover some of those bills. Yeah. So to some degree, medical insurance is. We're saying that it sort of is a discount program that's wrapped into the policy as well as the, the covering the uh, procedures and so yeah, forth. Yeah, I'm not sure I would call it a discount program, but, but there are discounts mm -hmm. that are negotiated on your behalf mm -hmm. as the consumer mm -hmm. by the PPO or the HMO or the insurance company uh, with groups of providers. I mean, you, you hear the terminology network. Uh, uh -huh. These are groups of people that have agreed to a reduced price in order to be listed in the network. Uh, so, so you have that uh, situation that you wouldn't be able to deal with on your own. You wouldn't be able to individually negotiate uh, for a w wide group of discounts like they do for you. Okay. Well, these last few years, uh, and actually over time in general, the, the picture has been changing for individuals related to medical insurance. And as a person that works in that business, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the changes are that have been happening. Well, actually, today I'm pretty excited about the changes going on, and I, and I think uh, every individual uh, should be as well. 
uh, with our health care reform law that was uh, passed into law last year, uh, there have already been multiple changes made to uh, the plans uh, that are available. For example, now people are able to keep their uh, dependents on until they're age 26, whether they're in school or not. Uh, there's no pre-existing condition exclusion allowed uh, for insuring children under 19 years of age. And of course, the uh, removal of any annual limits uh, that were in the policies, that's all been uh, affected uh, so far. And then uh, preventive care provided at no cost, no co-pays, no co-insurance. Uh, these are huge, uh, huge changes. And, uh, and I, I think when, when we get to the place where we have the exchanges uh, uh, operating and operating as they're supposed to operate, um, then we will have uh, we will have come full circle with the uh, with the problem that people have getting individual medical insurance today. Right. So before health care reform, what did things look like? Well, the individual marketplace uh, in at least in California, this is where my experience is, uh, has not been favorable to the consumer because uh, companies have been able to underwrite policies and decline or severely rate up people that were sick, people that really needed the insurance. So, so those things uh, have, have built a, a dysfunctional individual market in California. Now we have the reform coming to play, and parts of that reform have addressed uh, these issues. And in fact, uh, there are some great opportunities uh, today for people to have, uh, people that have pre-existing conditions, Mm -hmm. uh, and they're unable to get insurance or have been unable to get insurance in the past, now have an option and a place to go uh, for that insurance uh, other than the Mr. Mib board in California, which, which was the, uh, the effort that we did as a state to uh, provide a market for uninsurable people, people that had uh, medical problems that were so severe that no insurance company would take them on at, at any price. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, um, we have a, a great option in the, uh, the pre-existing uh, pre condition insurance plan that was provided for under health care reform, which is available to uh, Californians today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did a little comparison on, on that, a little comparison shopping for myself and for you and for any of the people here that would like a copy of that. And um, the interesting part about it is that this plan uh, provides for insurance and requires that the cost be no more than 100% uh, of the cost that a normally insured person would experience. So, uh, so as an example, a, if, uh, if a person bought a, an individual policy, an HMO policy from uh, a, a big provider, nonprofit provider in California, and they were age 55 to 59, the price would be about $950 per month. Uh, if you got that policy through the, the new uh, federal plan, the PCIP plan, uh, that premium would be $624 per month. And if you were uh, forced to go to the, to the uh, high risk pool that was set up in California, the premium would vary between, uh, for a PPO plan, $1,235 a month and an HMO plan of six, seven, 679 a month. So clearly, uh, for people with pre-existing conditions, the, uh, the playing field is open, and um, they just need to, uh, to, get, uh, to get out there and see what it means to them individually. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, let's get maybe into a little bit more detail here. So how do health conditions affect your rating premiums and the ability to get health insurance? Well, um, they, the, uh, the medical premiums that are developed by insurance companies are based on what they call experience, which, which means how much are they going to have to pay out for these particular medical uh, treatment and care versus how much they take in. So, uh, so clearly you can see that someone that, that, that where they're going to pay out uh, $1,500 a month in, in benefits to the providers, to the doctors and the hospitals and that kind of thing, the premium for that would, would have to be more 
than for someone where they were paying out nothing. And so in the past, when they were allowed to, uh, to pick and choose between people, uh, clearly the ones that had the higher claims were the undesirable folks, and they were not allowed into the pool, if you will. Uh, however, today, uh, not only with the access through this uh, PCIP plan, but uh, the medical insurance companies now are, are kind of loosening up and develop, they developed like a, a four or five tier system of rating. So there's a standard rate and then there's a, there's a rate if you have a few things wrong and that's you know, plus 10% and then they have a plus 20%, that kind of thing. So, so the market is, is uh, loosening again, uh, uh, not sure why, but probably because of the, uh, the competition from the other. Okay, so why don't we talk a little bit about uh, what's going to happen in 2014, about how healthcare reform is changing this picture again. Yeah, so in, in uh, today we have uh, this, the PCIP plan. What does PCIP uh, mean, by uh, the way? I'm sorry, Pre-Existing Condition Insurance Plan. Okay. It's a federally funded plan. And uh, uh, it's uh, the federal government in the new law set aside $5 billion to help states to provide this plan. Uh, the initial allocation to California was uh, roughly $760 million dollars. Uh, to help us set up this plan. So it's fully funded by mm -hmm. the federal government mm -hmm. uh, here in California. Um, so we, uh, we have that uh, as a stopgap from now until 2014 when the exchanges will then come into effect, uh, which will then allow individuals to shop for insurance along with small businesses and large businesses kind of on the same basis where they, where they cannot be uh, the rate can't be changed because of pre-existing conditions um, and anything that they've got uh, going on. Okay, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what are the exchanges? Uh, sure, an exchange is, uh, is really just a, a place where uh, providers, which I, I would say the insurance companies and the HMOs, so the Aetna and Blue Cross and Blue Shield and, and uh, Cigna and those people, would come and provide a, a plan which under the exchanges that are required by the Act have a set level of benefits. So there'll be four levels of benefits and then each insurance company will come in and offer a price for those benefits and any other additional benefits that they want to put in. But they must at least provide the minimum level of benefit for a specified price. And then you and I, the consumer, uh, either you as a small businessman with your employees or me as an individual would be able to go down to the exchange or on the website more specifically mm -hmm. and we would be able to see oh here's here's various options and here's various pricing and and make a decision uh, that's best for us based on uh, the information that we have there. So it'll make more comparable information available and also sort of standardized to some degree some of the coverage to make each of the plans more comparable in making this decision process. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say comparable because that I think that